Um, you know, you talked a lot about next generation sequencing and how that has changed the landscape of treatment for lung cancer. Uh, what is your current practice in terms of ordering next generation sequencing? Do you order it on all on patients with all stages or is it just stage four? Um, so if there is a patient who recently gets diagnosed with lung cancer, uh, how should they think about whether they would need an NGS testing or not? And what do they discuss with their doctors? Uh, I happen to be in a highly academic institution. So what is practice in my institution might not be necessarily the rule of practice in the community setting. In my institution, we are aiming for doing uh, next-gen sequencing uh, practically on all patients with lung cancer who comes in, uh, particularly enforced now with uh, also a DORA uh, study in early stage disease. Um, and we have the opportunity to do next gen sequencing with uh, in-house with a um, company who uh, came out of Sinai. Now, what I have also participated in uh, guidelines for CAP ISLC AMP. And the guidelines do not recommend uh, molecular profiling for all patients. They recommend uh, uh, molecular profiling for patients with adenocarcinoma and for certain patients with squamous, if they are young, if they are never smoker, if they, um, you have a suspicion of uh, a molecular driver, ethnicity, uh, Asian background, those things can come into play even for patients with squamous lung cancer. So uh, the answer to your question is a little bit complex. Uh, I will say that patients with adenocarcinoma should be molecular tested today independent of stage. The patients with squamous lung cancer should, uh, they should be tested if they have certain uh, characteristics as mentioned, never smoker, uh, early age or young age and uh, Asian uh, ethnicity. Uh, so uh, that will be my, uh, my take on it. Uh, a question which has come up frequently is, if a patient has a poor performance status, performance status two or three, uh, do you uh, have um, a mutation status on this patient? Even if poor performance status is not included in the clinical trials, we all know anecdotally that if a patient come in in poor performance status, and the poor performance status is because of the disease and not the comorbidity situation. This patient, if he has the right molecular abnormality, we can have this patient jumping out of the, out of the bed within a few weeks. If this patient happened to have an EGFR mutation, and that is the reason for a poor performance status. So in my opinion, poor performance status is not the limitation for uh, molecular profiling. I hope I have given my perspective to it. Yes, absolutely. No, thank you so much. So I'm hearing, um, you know, for, from an audience perspective that um, you know, always good to discuss with your doctors, regardless of what your stage, whether they think you should be tested for uh, next generation sequencing and mutations. And yeah. like you said, I think that's very true that, you know, performance status should not be a, a limiting factor for this kind of testing. Yeah. Um, 
I guess just another follow up on that, um, and that actually question comes from the audience was, um, I know you talked a little bit about, um, you know, the use of amivantamab. So there's a question from the audience talking about, is the amivantamab effective for Exxon 21? Exxon 21? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't have data on that yet. We are talking Exxon 20? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 